Let's investigate the Lewis structures and the shapes of some of these molecules that contain expanded octets. The two most fundamental are the phosphorus pentachloride and the sulfur hexafluoride. Taking a look at these structures and shapes will give us a good start as we investigate the expanded octets. For the phosphorus pentachloride, if we draw the Lewis structure, we got five valence electrons in the phosphorus seven in each of the chlorines, so that's 35 electrons in all the chlorines, so we have 40 electrons to deal with. If I put phosphorus in the middle and surround it with five chlorines, well that's 10 electrons for the bonds, and that leaves 30 left, and I can put six on each of the chlorines, And that's all my electrons, and that's it. It's just phosphorus with single bonds to all the chlorines. You can check the formal charges and everything's at zero. It's a nice stable molecule. And it's stable because phosphorus can expand its octet. And you see the same thing with the sulfur hexafluoride. Sulfur has six valence electrons. Fluoride has got seven, but that means 42 total electrons. So I have 48 electrons to deal with. So when I do sulfur, bonded to six fluorines, I use 12 electrons in my bonds. That leaves 36 electrons left, which is six electrons in each of the six fluorines. Again, just single bonds to the outside atoms. And if you check our formal charge, you get formal charges of zero on everything and you get a nice stable molecule because sulfur can expand its octet. Now I want to use the molecule shape simulation from FET to figure out what the molecular geometry or the shape is of these molecules. As I start adding bonds to a central atom, we know that when we have two sites on the central atom, we get a linear molecule, three sites trigonal planar, four sites tetrahedral. These are the shapes that we've seen before. What happens when we put five sites on the central atom? We get this shape right here. And if I click on the tile that gives us molecular geometry, it tells us that this shape is called a trigonal bipyramid. Now the trigonal bipyramid is interesting because I can show the bond angles, and you actually have several bond angles. You have a 90 degree bond angle from the top of the shape to the side. But then if you spin it like this, you have 120 degree bond angles around the middle. Chemists will often refer to these as axial and equatorial bonds. If you think of the trigonal bipyramid spinning around like a top, it could spin on these axis right here. And then if you were to look at it from the top as it was spinning, you could see it rotating around the equator. So the bonds around the equator make a trigonal planar shape, and that's your 120 degree bond angle. The angle from the axis to the equator is 90 degrees, and that's true no matter what direction you go to. And then FET doesn't show this bond angle, but you can also consider the bond angle going from axis to axis, going straight across the molecule and that would be 180 degrees. So that's our trigonal bipyramid shape. That's when you have five sites on the central atom. If you add a sixth site to the central atom, like the sulfur hexafluoride, you get something that looks like this. And this is nice symmetric shape. This is referred to as an octahedral shape. And as you look around the octahedral shape, you can see a nice symmetric 90 degree bond angles between all your bonds. Just like with the trigonal bipyramid, you could also consider the bond angle for two bonds that go straight through the middle. So you could also consider a 180 degree bond angle in your octahedron, and then 90 degree angles from one plane to the next. Everything is perpendicular.